good today. What good DTL universe. Welcome into your daily sports and sports betting brand of record. We're here every single day at 10 a.m. Eastern time to get your day started. For you to walk away with a little smile, feeling good about yourself. And this feels a little bit better because this week we've got championship week. We got the players championship. Do not forget later today at 3 p.m. Eastern time, DTL golf. All the boys will be here for the biggest event on the PGA Tour schedule. Now, as always, we are the most transparent show in sports betting as well. We always show you what we did the day before. And my man, Charles, the man from the dirty, dirty, doing work for us again. So not our best day, but I'll tell you what is positive. Gonzaga, the crew, you guys continue to absolutely kill it in the chat. By the way, do not forget to hit that like button for us. It really helps the show grow. So with all that being said, let's bring in my partner. The man who helped start this incredible brand a couple of months ago. And doing yeoman's work, we call him our 5 to a player. A.B., good morning, sir. Good morning, coach. Good morning, crew. Good morning, everyone. Uh, and I, I got to say uh, two things. Number one, thank you to the crew for that Gonzaga. And number two, damn Draymond Green. I should have listened to all of you. Nikola Jokic <laughs> just wets a three, and I'm like, all right, we're good. We're golden, whatever. Draymond, er, wrong. <laughs> I'll tell you what you did do, though, because we were doing live last night. And by the way, it's in everybody's feed right now. We should have called it Howie Schwab Unleashed is what we could have, we should have called it last night. He was amazing. If you're a member of the crew and you watched it, you know what I'm talking about. I thought it was Howie's best show. His best show, A.B. Which is saying something. Yes. 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 Uh, by the way, um, I got to give you your flowers because I missed a few shows in the last several days. I was doing the API last week and all you guys are picking me up, but your college baseball continues to destroy it. And today and tomorrow, what do we have in store? Will we have a new this week in baseball, which I always look forward to. We do coach. We do. And you know what? We had a great weekend, went seven and two in parlays and in college baseball. Um, you know, we're entering phase two. We're going uh, away from non-conference play on the weekend okay. to conference play. All right. So that's a big step. And we'll talk about it today, 2 p.m. Eastern, this week in college baseball for sure. That will be on the YouTube page, 2 p.m. Eastern. And I promise, even though I will be late to my own funeral, it will be on time with this one. Very good. And Paul, I know we're having some tech issues. We're trying to get to the right mic. I unloaded everything, repacked it, and something happened. So we're just trying to get through the next couple of days, but I know we're probably not on the right microphone, but we'll get there. As long as you can hear me, that's all we care about right now. All right, what are the, the selections for the crew today, A.B.? All right, so some nice selections, and we're going to stick to two games, four options. Here's what I mean. College basketball. You take a Gonzaga or you take it St. Mary's? Gonzaga minus three and a half, St. Mary's plus three and a half. And in the NBA, you take it the Timberwolves plus six and a half, or you take it the Clippers minus six and a half. The poll is in the chat. Vote now, and we will update at the end of the show as we do. All right. Very, very good. Uh, by the way, <laughs> Peggy said you can still stay, Coach. Thank you, Peggy, very much. I appreciate you, as always. All right. We've got, um, unless I missed one, Atlantic 10, ACC, Big 12, Conference USA, NAAC. They all get started today, which means, A.B., we need some of our best college basketball cappers in the universe and i think we've got it. so without further ado ladies and gentlemen it's time for the picks so we had him up late last night howie schwab is here in the morning rafael esparza is here the man from the dirty dirt charles is here again champions league Two big games today. We have picks for you right here on the show. Real quick, Howie Schwab, a lot of tournaments getting underway today. What are you most looking forward to? I know it's going to sound strange, but the ACC tournament today is intriguing to me because will this be the last game for Payne at Louisville? Will this be Notre Dame another 20-loss season if they lose today? Uh, you, ha you have three games. And there's some intrigue still because it is the ACC. Uh, I say the ACC first. I mean, the A-10, I think, is going to be a great tournament. But do we really care about Duquesne? I mean, come on. Uh, ACC is my pick on that. Georgia Tech, Notre Dame, 2 p.m. today. Louisville, NC State. 
4.30, and then Miami and Boston College later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We've got a ton of picks to get to. So, gentlemen, as Raphael is dicing up the numbers over there, that's exactly what he brings to the table. Charles is ready for the soccer. But, Howie, I want to start with you, big boy. And I want to go – I mean, you go super size today. So we got to chop yours up today. I want your first three plays today. And if I know you, like I think I know you, after the day we had yesterday, you're coming out like a rabid dog today. Talk to me. I sure am because I was not real happy last night in terms of the picks. But bottom line is this. I came out and picked some interesting games. Bryant against UMass Lowell I think is going to be a very good game. Uh, Bryant – they beat Florida Atlantic earlier in the season. I think they could keep this close. Cincinnati, I'm going with a big line. West Virginia is terrible, in my opinion. And then Manhattan, I don't get this. Did anyone realize Manhattan beat the hell out of Iona last week by over 20 points as a Ooh. big dog? So why won't why can't that at least be close to happening again? I'm going with John Gallagher and Manhattan to uh, keep it interesting. See, leave it up to you, Howie Schwab, to find games like that. And that's what Championship Week is really all about, is finding the really games that maybe the sports books are overlooking when you got so many games in a very, very finite period of time. All right, Raphael, I know you got one college basketball game today. Where are we headed, sir? Yeah, I'm going with the best nickname in college sports, period. The Jackrabbits. Uh, give me South Dakota State minus eight and a half against Denver South Dakota State has won eight straight, and they've covered seven of those games. I just like the way the Jackrabbits have been playing. I know it's a big number. They've already beat Denver once already and beat them by double digits. So give me the Jackrabbits. And those people who are looking at Gonzaga St. Mary's tonight, that game will have more action than a lot of the NBA games that are on the betting board today. So keep an eye on this one. Would not be shocked if St. Mary's moves up to four. Caesars already moved it up to four. Uh, so if you're going to bet this game, bet it late if you're looking for the better number. And Great job, any- Raphael. I, I got to step in for one second. Uh, they're playing a seventh seed in the final. Okay. Right now, you have Stony Brook as a seven in the CAA. You have South Dakota State's opponent tonight is a seventh seed in, in uh, Denver. And then you have a tenth seed still going, Sacramento State. Everyone loves these Cinderella's, but they don't usually get there. Speaking of the word love, Howie Schwab, we are worldwide, ladies and gentlemen. I mean worldwide. A.B., look at the chat. My man John Lau, L-A-I, says, I love this show. Sending a love from New Zealand. I think it's a it's a day later in New Zealand right now. Is, isn't it like Wednesday already over there near Australia? I'm hey, telling we'll, you, hey, we'll, we'll, tell, we'll tell me how Tuesday's picks went. Let me get, get that puppy real quick. Yeah, right. really? <laughs> yeah. you know, Let us buddy. know how tomorrow's picks will go today. All right. We've got more college basketball, but we got to chop it up today. And we never force picks here. I know a lot of new people try us out every single day. We only give out what we call best bets. So full unit sizes unless it's golf. So, again, Charles, like Howie, found a lot that he loves today. So let's go to game number one, uh, Charles, in the Champions League today. And let me look it up. It's Napoli, which a lot of people seem to think they're the same team as a year ago. They are not, but they're taking on Barcelona. And you found three plays in this one. Start us off right there, please. Yeah, we kick off the second leg of the round of 16 at the Camp Nou. Unfortunately, Barcelona limps into this elimination match with as many as seven players missing. But the five-time Champions League winners are always dangerous at home with the likes of Lewandowski leading the line. The Blagrana also failed to lose in the group stage in front of their home supporters, scoring nine, 10 goals with all three matches exceeding 2.5 total goals. Meanwhile, the Naples side has been reinvigorated since bringing on their third manager of the season. Failing to lose over that five-match span, Napoli has also scored in all five matches, including that 1-1 draw in the first leg a fortnight ago. Napoli understands they are winless in seven straight versus Barcelona, but feel this is their best chance to break that trend. I also see them getting off to a fast start with Napoli. First half, team total over 0.5, over 2.7 full-time goals, and Victor, Victor Osman, anytime goal score at a ridiculous plus 200 or ATGS. 
I encourage you to follow my man on social media because he is constantly updating his plays, what he likes throughout the day. You can see his uh, Twitter handle right there or the X handle right there. I'm telling you, he's a great follow. Give him a follow today and do it right now. My goodness, A.B., I keep looking at the chat, and all I see is college baseball, college baseball, college. We'll get to that in a second, everybody. It's like you only, you want to catch before we can actually catch it. That's what I like. That's what A.B. is all about. Now, how is Schwab? I knew, I knew we'd raise this thing up just a little bit. I knew when we got to Mar Ma March Madness. And you know what I'm working on today, if it's okay with you? I've got a meeting later this morning. True story. And we're looking for our next featured merch item. I was kind of stuck because I don't want to use the really good stuff. We want to save it for football. But I thought, what if we make a shirt that says, I am one of Howie's homies? What do you think about that, Howie? Sounds good to me. Let's sell the merchandise. Yay. I love it. Go for it. If you would like a I am a Howie's homie t-shirt, just put into the chat, yes, please, coach. And I want to see how many of you would love to support that and then send in a picture and spread the wealth and spread the word of DTL all over the world, like in New Zealand. John, you can buy it in New Zealand. We international ship. I want to see Alicia in the Howie's homie shirt. Oh, I would too. All right. Very good. We have sizes for everybody, and all people are welcome right here. So, <clears throat> Alicia's one of our OGs. All right, Howie, let me come back to you. Because I'm seeing four more games today. You mentioned that ACC tournament, and I've got two plays from you in that tournament alone. Bring it to me. Okay, let's start with Louisville. Louisville is one of the worst teams in America, and yet I think they're going to give them a game. Number one, the players respect and like Kenny Payne. Number two, Louisville and NC State this season played a game that was in single figures. So I'm hoping it happens, happens again. Pardon me. Then there's New Hampshire against Vermont. Last game they played, single figures. So I'm taking a lot of, a lot of points. I know Vermont's a great team for the America East, the dominant team, but New Hampshire's improved their program. Jacksonville State I'm taking – because I just don't like FIU. And then finally, Notre Dame, Georgia Tech, I went back and forth, and I decided Notre Dame has played better in the second half of the season, despite the fact they have 19 losses. I think when the, you look at their young talent, guys like Burton, uh, they are a team that I think has a better future. So I'm going to go with Notre Dame today, and I'm going with seven games. First time I've done that. And better win. I, I, I'm feeling at least six and one. I think it's at least a six and one day for Howie. You're fine with I me. I, I heard you say finally, or did you say finally? By the way, uh, we're taking our next behind the turnbuckle. Today it drops on Friday every single week. Just a little plug right there. Howie, your nails. Stick and stay. We've got a big educate and entertain coming up for you. All right, <clears throat> Charles, you know I absolutely love the Champions League. And I'm low-key a next-level soccer capper myself. But I'm not going to show off today. I'm going to let you do that. Because the other game today, and it starts at 4 p.m. Eastern instead of 3, that would be the normal time. And this game, FC Porto, shockingly, is up one nothing on the aggregate. This is the second leg for both of these two games today. What do you like in the Arsenal game? Yeah, the Gunners were less than impressive in Portugal, failing to even register a single shot on target after exploding for goals in the EPL. Now Arsenal retort, returns to North London down a goal, and Mikel Arteta is fully confident his squad, squad can flip the script on the Portuguese at the Emirates, where they have scored a staggering 12 goals in the group stage while failing to concede in those three home fixtures. Porto, they do enter this meeting with a slim advantage and are typically not the type of team to just sit back and park the bus. Although they, although they are winless in three visits versus Arsenal and failing to score in all three, the Dragons did score in their three away games in the group stage, compiling eight total goals on the road. Porto were able to keep the Gunners off the scoreboard in the first go around, but this should be a different Arsenal, and I'm expecting an early barrage with Arsenal scoring in both halves and the over three full-time goals in this matchup. It's very, very, very important to look at the leg that it is, look at the score that it is. Soccer is very different. Champions League is exactly that. Charles, thank you very much. Now, let's go to the NBA. And, yes, 
the NBA is playing tonight, despite all of the championship week games. And Raphael, I've got two plays, and I want your reaction to them. I like the Thunder minus six and a half tonight. They've been really, really good. They got Indiana. The Pacers on the road aren't nearly the team, I believe, when they play at home. So you land the extra five cents. I don't mind it. And the Thunder have been playing really good. And now that we're into March, I think they want to start putting their foot on the gas pedal and show everybody they mean business as we head into the playoffs. The other one, the Bucks, late night tonight, money line, minus 140. And this kind of plays into your game a little bit. We could both hit ours. But I think the Bucks. the reason I took the points out of it is because they are playing on the road. They have shown a, a tendency to sleepwalk through some games. But I think now they've got it together. I think they win tonight in Sacramento. But they could give up some points, which is what you believe. I do. Uh, I would be skeptic on the Milwaukee Bucks. Just at that number at minus 140, I think Kings money will come in. It's the late game. Uh, Sacramento at home. Last time we saw the Kings at home, the Rockets beat them 112-104 with the Kings shot horrible in the second half. Uh, Sabonis got no uh, help. He was the only one doing anything in that game. So if you're looking to play the Bucks uh, and tailing the coach, wait. I wouldn't be shocked if we see minus 135, minus 133 around that range. Uh, but I think it's going to – I'll put my NBA play right now. I think we're going to see a lot of points scored. The total is 236. That's why I like the Sacramento Kings team total uh, over 117. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Uh, the Kings' last three games, two of them have gone – flew over that tour, 131 points against uh, the Spurs and 130 against the Lakers. I think the Kings score a lot of points on this one. Yeah, Scott said, Coach, I love the Kings game to go over the recent history. It shows point total goes over. What's the number right now? Uh, Raphael, as we speak. For the money line? For the over, for the total. Oh, for our 236. There is a 236 and a half out there. Okay. Very, very good. All right. So many of you have been waiting patient because our man is absolutely destroying the college baseball game. So much so, there's been rumors on the streets that certain sports books are shutting down because of what we're doing. All of you are just ramping up your bank accounts. So I would just back away and say thank you, AB, and have a good day. So, AB, big boy, what do we got today? Coach, very kind of you. And I'll tell you what, we are going to start with our man, Bill Nichols, here because he said, keep it going, have a place picked out on Bell Mead Boulevard. Just got to pay for it. And anybody who doesn't live in Nashville, understand this. Taylor Swift lives over in that area. If you want to know how expensive that it is, and my man dropped that reference there. So it's going to be a great day, Bill. Well done on that one. First up, going Florida, money line. All right, this is a Tuesday midweek game against Florida State. And everybody knows we love Florida State. We love betting them. And Florida, one of the best teams in the country, but they are inconsistent. That's why I want to bet them today because, quite frankly, they have to win this damn game. All right, there's no excuses. They have to win this damn game. So we're going to play them. And how nice is it that we're getting away from all parlays, too? We're going to get to play just one team straight up. Fantastic. Next one, Texas A&M money line, Auburn money line. All right. Pay attention to teams that are playing in-state, smaller schools on these, you know, midweek, Tuesday, Wednesday type games. They can be dangerous, but I trust Texas A&M. And I trust Auburn. Take both of them here, plus 100. Finally, Vanderbilt at home against Indiana on the money line. And here is the biggest one. Right here, Wake Forest, money line. put those two together, plus 135. And everyone knows there is no team that we love betting more than Coastal Carolina. No one knows about them, and we have cashed literally thousands of dollars already, and they're facing Wake Forest today. And damn it, I hate going against Coastal Carolina ever. But Wake Forest has to win this damn game, too, because they went up against Duke and did not have a great weekend. And quite frankly, it hasn't been a great start to us to the season for the overall favorite to win the national championship. They have three guys that can throw 103 miles an hour. I th They're going to have to win this game. Point blank, period. Have to win this game. You're going to take them, put them with Vanderbilt. Last night, somebody said on our crew exclusive stream, which is live in your feed right now, if you're a crew member, you can go watch it there, whatever you want. They said college baseball, A.B., is your happy place. And I'm like, when you talk about college baseball, like you love it more than anything. Is that true? Is yeah, that true? it is. It is. Now, the Atlanta Braves are very close because they made us a ton of money last year as well. And I cannot wait to start hitting on some of those baby Austin Riley parlays. 
that we smashed last year. But yeah, man, <laughs> college baseball, dude, love it. Oh, we absolutely love it. And we love it here at DTO. And I love all the guys being very, very active in the chat. Raphael's in the chat right now. We've got our DTL in the chat right now. So if you have any questions, just ask him. We'll try to get to as many as we can in real time. Now, we have a portion of the show where we like to discuss things that happen in the world of sports that could affect down the line certain betting aspects. And there is never not a good time to talk about the NFL. And yesterday was absolutely crazy. So, Charles, we're going to dip you out just for a few minutes and bring you back on the whip around. But it's now time to educate and entertain. Now, who would have thought that we would have content just laid out right in front of us today when you're talking about the NFL? And we're going to start up there in the Northeast, Saquon Barkley. And I don't know why we're so crazy about stuff like this guy's going from one team in the NFC East to your bitter rival right down I-95. Hey, if they're going to offer you three years, $36 million, you got to take it. But a former player and running back, for the Giants, Tiki Barber, he's got a local show in New York City. And I want to run what he said yesterday when they were talking about this particular signing in Philadelphia. And Saquon has already taken to Twitter himself to say thank you to everyone who's shown me love and support over the past six years. Forever grateful. Excited for the next chapter. Blue heart emoji. Peace okay, right. blue heart emoji. He's I'm looking at us. him. He's pick. dead to us now. Yeah, say it. <laughs> he's dead to us. Because he won't say it. You're dead to us, Saquon. Stay. Good luck. You're dead to me. So uh, Tiki was laughing. Saquon was not laughing. Here is what he put out after this sound yesterday. He said this, and I quote, uh, yeah, you're the prime example of loyalty to a team. Damn. I got the deal I wanted, secured more, and which wasn't given to me before. So if fans are going to hate me for that, so be it. But I never turned my back on my teammates and always had theirs. Snap. Howie Schwab, let's start with you. This was right between the eyes. Does this shock you coming from Saquon? No, and he's actually dead right. I mean, he was willing to take less money at times. He stayed around, and he always was a good teammate for the Giants. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. But again, now you have a rivalry where he's going to be playing twice a year for the Eagles against the Giants, and that's going to get nasty. And I'll tell you what, with this free agency, you're going to see a lot of that. I mean, Thomas Jones going from the Packers to the Vikings, that's going to become a war between those two guys and teams with these players. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. The NFL loves this. John says, Saquon sounds bitter. Joey says, Torch Tiki. Raphael, I come to you. I think Tiki was just kind of laughing this off, and they kind of goaded him a little bit. But it sounds like, to me, this has been kind of building up for Saquon and he needed to, you know, to kind of just let it out. Yeah, I think with all the sacrifices he's done for the Giants, especially to get uh, Jones his big his big contract, I don't blame him, but I'm, I, I kind of like both sides. I'm a twin. My brother moved to St. Louis. Now he's a Cardinals fan. I'm a Cubs fan. He's dead to me. So I, I understand <laughs> the, the both sides of the story. But uh, uh, Saquon has every right. All the sacrifices he's done, I totally agree with. I'm on his side. I, I am too, because A.B., it, it's the old days, maybe in the 70s and 80s, it would have been like, no, I can't go to that team. But when you're a running back in 2024 and you're just looking for a spot and somebody offers you $12 million a year as opposed to seven or eight, you got to take it no matter who it is. Yes? Oh, yeah. All right. First off, three things. Number one, did that guy have a blue and red beard? I need to know what's going on with that one because I saw that spray painted on there. I respect it. Well done. Number two, when the Eagles play the Giants that first game, I don't give a damn what Saquon Barkley's prop rushing number is. I'm taking it. The second that it's available, I'm taking the over on that one because he's going to have a little juice if we could just go ahead and say that. And then number three, dude, look, I don't blame Saquon at all. The Giants, the last two years, they have used this guy so damn much he has been literally their entire offense. Everyone knows on the defense that he's getting the ball. He had no offensive line, and he's running into a wall 30 times a game. You know what? 
The dude did it. He even got hurt doing it. They, are, they had their chance to pay him. They didn't. That's on you, New York. Exactly right. Exactly right. And there it is one more time. Saquon Barkley going after Tiki. He also uh, said, uh, do not laugh or smile when you see me in my face the next time that we interact, which if you've never lived in the New York City area, it happens a lot. There are a lot of athletes that do a lot of the same things, so they're going to see each other. I just can't wait to see what happens when they see each other. Now, there were a lot more signings on Monday. And, Howie, I want to come back to you because I want to get what you think was the best one because there was one big-time quarterback signing out there, Kirk Cousins, coming off what I believe is the hardest injury to come back from, certainly as a player that needs to move back and forth, and that's a torn Achilles. But the Atlanta Falcons did not care. They signed him to four years. $180 $180 million, $100 million of which is absolutely guaranteed. Was this your favorite from day one, or did you have something else? I'm going to surprise you. I My one that I saw that I said, you know what? This guy's going to have about 1,200 yards. He's going to catch a ton of passes out of the backfield. Austin Eckler to the Commanders. The commanders need help so badly, and now they got a guy who could be really, really valuable. Uh, I know most people would not answer that way, uh, but I'm going to say Austin Eckler. I'm also going to say this. This is what's amazing about this free agency. Uh, You have this year's version of Baker Mayfield. Sam Darnold is now the Viking quarterback? (laughs) What? Uh... (laughs) <laughs> but you know what? Look where he was drafted. Look what people thought early on in his career. And look what Baker Mayfield has done, turning things around in Tampa, getting the big bucks. I really think Sam Darnold is going to be looked at as Minnesota's version of Baker Mayfield. Very, very interesting. By the way, Baker Mayfield, three years, $33 million per year. He signed a couple of days ago. Uh, your Austin Eckler number was two years, 11.4. So he's only getting about 5.7 a year for a guy who's been incredibly productive in the passing game and also from time to time on the ground. Raphael, let me come to you. What did you think so far? There's going to be a lot more today. Was the biggest signing from day one? I would say the NFC North. I mean, Packers getting Josh Jacobs, Vikings picking up Aaron Jones. I mean, I think the NFC North, the Bears picking up a whole bunch of defensive guys. I think the winner yesterday was the NFC North. I mean, everyone wants to talk about Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta. I think we all kind of knew that was going to happen. So that wasn't a really big splash for me. But when was the, when was the last time we saw the Packers being so active in free agency? Uh, the Vikings kind of reacted on that one. Give me the NFC North. But keep an eye out today for Jameis Winston. Uh, his name's been coming up. Uh, I've been getting text messages all over the place. He could be on his way out uh, uh, the Saints and be in a backup role somewhere. So keep an eye out for Jameis Winston to go. I guess maybe whoever has good crab legs, that's where he'll go. <laughs> and I wonder how much the market is going to move now to, to kind of piggyback that a little bit, Raphael, for backup quarterbacks. Because if you've got a guy like Baker who is a starter making 33, and then you guys guys like Kirk Cousins making 45, A.B., and I want your answer as well. What what's going to be a good price for a backup quarter? It's going to be ten or fifteen now. Hey, you talking to me or Raphael? Oh, yo, I'm talking to AB. Sorry, yeah, AB. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, you know, it's a good question because here's the thing. Look around the league. There are a lot of pretty good young quarterbacks in the draft. There's a lot of good young quarterbacks there. So, Um, I don't have a number for you, but I don't think that it's as high as it used to be. Look at Gardner Minshew going to the Raiders backup quarterback. He could be be the starter out there. Um, So, yeah, I I don't have a good number for you. If I had Spotrack pulled up, they do a great job with it. But, um, yeah, like there's a lot of depth at the quarterback position across the league and a lot of young, good depth. So that's why we're seeing guys like Jameis Winston that, We're not even talking about having a chance to crack the field, right? Um, It's deep. It's usually not deep at the quarterback position, but the last few years it is. I'll tell you where you get paid, kids. Offensive line. Eat a few extra pancakes and lay out some pancakes. You will get paid. Every offensive lineman out here in free agency is getting big trust paid. 
because supply and demand on that, there is no supply and a ton of demand. You're damn, you're damn right. And it's so impressive and so important. How? Yes. It's not only the offensive line, it's the defensive line. Because the, the guy I would have had on my list as second most incredible signing yesterday or now in free agency, Christian Wilkins, who I saw a ton down here in Miami, now going to the Raiders. I mean, Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins, wow, that's going to be amazing. And you, But you're right about offensive line. John running into the Giants is a good example. I mean, uh, you're going to see a lot of guys get paid. <laughs> Free agency, hey, just cha-ching, cha-ching. Yeah, Christian Wilkins, four years, $110 million. going to play right next to Max Crosby. Go, A.B. Yeah, yeah, just wanted to jump in real quick. So, uh, number one, that big trust, that was for our man, Tom in Pittsburgh, who holds it down for us constantly in OG, Tom. That was for you. And number two, John Cholak asks, is Derrick Henry going to sign with the Cowboys? Let me just tell you this. Derrick Henry just purchased him a house in Texas. That being said, I don't know. I don't know what he's about to do. I don't think it's Dallas. I think Houston would like to have him. Uh, oh, I, but I believe we'll that. See. Yeah. Well, and it feels like, Raphael, I'll let you close up the discussion and then we'll get to the whip around. But a lot of the – sometimes it's fastest to the pay window. And Josh Jacobs is going to the Packers, four years, $48 million. You got a couple of others, guys, Tony Pollard, three for 24 in Tennessee. Aaron Jones, one for seven in Minnesota. So if you're talking about Derrick Henry, the options might be running out already because all of these guys said, you know what, I'm going to take this today. I got to get guaranteed money. Yeah, and I think that's why Baltimore, I think Baltimore will have a little bit more money than Dallas. And I think if you're looking, if you're uh, Henry what team would you want to go to? I think Baltimore has an easier way to make it long in the, in the playoffs than Dallas does, and we all know about Dallas in the playoffs. So that's why I think he goes to a, a Baltimore. Uh, I think Lamar Jackson's really been pushing to get him, to sign him. I think uh, Henry goes to Baltimore, not Dallas. Even though Dallas will fit him, but Dallas is a two-running back system. Baltimore already has a nice running back, and they have two. Uh, uh, so that I think he'll be able to carry the ball much better there. I'm a little surprised nobody mentioned Russell Wilson. The Steelers getting in for $1.2 million, and then Denver writes the rest of that $38 million check. So the Steelers can sign a lot more guys. They can get in the draft. So keep an eye on Pittsburgh when you've got a $1 million quarterback who's already won a Super Bowl. We'll see. We'll see. All right, it's that time of the show. It's time for the whip around. All right, this is where we just go through our picks in 15 seconds or less. Hal, let's go through all seven. Start us there, sir. Okay. Uh, I went a little crazy, but we're going to have some fun. When you look at these games, you have a bunch in the ACC. You have a bunch in various conferences and getting a lot of points in many cases. So we'll see how we do. All right, there you see him on the screen. Bryant, Cincinnati, Manhattan, Louisville, New Hampshire, Jacksonville State, Notre Dame. For those listening on Apple and Spotify, we love you also. All right, Charles, two big games in the Champions League today. Talk to me. Barcelona, Napoli. We're going to go with the Napoli first half team total over 0 0.5, over 2.75 full time goals in Victor Osim and anytime goal scorer or one plus goal. Next up, Arsenal Porto. Arsenal to score in both halves and over three full time goals. And again, those games start at 4 p.m. Eastern this afternoon. Raphael, what do we got? Give me a Sacramento Kings team total over 117. That uh, Bucks win 131-130, so we both cash uh, coach. And give me the best name, the Jackrabbit, South Dakota State, minus 8.5 over Denver today. I would like nothing more than to cash right alongside you, stand in the pay window, ask you what you had for dinner, and give a high five and then do it all over again tomorrow. All right, my two plays, Thunder, minus 6.5. I just like how they're playing at home. Pacers, I, I'm just not a believer when they're on the road. Then I love the Bucks money line tonight. You heard Raphael talk about it. They're going to be in sack town. I wanted to take the points out of it and lay the extra juice because sometimes the juice is worth the squeeze. A.B., bring us home. Yes, sir. Let's take the Florida Gators money line minus 115. These are all college baseball, by the way, against Florida State. Let's take Texas A&M money line plus Auburn money line at plus 100. And then Vanderbilt money line and Wake Forest money line at plus one thirty-five. 
All right. A busy, busy day at the brand today. Raphael, Charles, Howie, we'll see you on the crew exclusive. Thank you very much. It's now time for the closing bell. Maybe a couple of things. Everybody wants your college baseball picks so badly that there are people out there like Plus Money Sports who are out there signing up at different sports books just to get the bonuses just to play your college baseball plays today. Well, I'll tell you what, like, you know what? I, I would like to just, you know, let's just hammer it one book and say, look, hey, why don't you come be a partner? Or we're just going to keep blasting <laughs> you on these parlays. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, and uh, Barely Middle says, Louisiana Tech baseball today, but need another team to go with it. And I'll tell you this, man, Louisiana Tech might want to take a look at UC freaking Santa Barbara. Go Gauchos right up there with wow. the Jackrabbits. Great nickname. How many people had that team on their bingo card today? I don't think very many. By the way, did you see, and shout out to the Kelseys, did you see the story that their podcast is going to be up for renewal and that it could get as much as $100 million? But the report, and again, it's just a report, I never believe headlines, that it would be contingent on them having an episode with Taylor Swift on as a guest. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, whoever's cutting that check, uh, yeah, that, that, that that's getting the answers to the test before you take the test because she guarantees that payment right there. That Dude. would that would be a one check. Here you go. And that just paid oh, for the whole yeah. four or five years in one episode. Like, like McAfee so. was paying what? Aaron Rodgers, what, a million dollars, I think, for him? You know, for the Correct. Season. I think for a year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Taylor Swift, like, that's it's automatic. It's absolutely automatic. 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 All right, what is the crew selection today? They hit Gonzaga last night. What are we hitting today? Yeah, well, they're going right back to the well, and this is the highest percentage we have ever had on this show in the crew play of the day poll. Gonzaga, minus three and a half. They're rolling with it again against St. Mary's there. Zach's been playing great basketball as of late. The crew's been damn killing it as of late, so yeah. I'm rolling with them here too. Gonzaga, minus three and a half. You guys are so smart in the chat. I encourage you to hit the like button on your way out. Do not forget today, DTL Golf at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to be taping our next Behind the Turnbuckle. So, A.B., what time will your uh, college baseball segment be out today? Yep, 2 p.m. Eastern. And that is a nice little appetizer to bring you right in to this week for the PGA Tour with you and the boys out there crushing it, man. You're damn right. The Players' Championship this week. We're going to talk all about it today at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Producer man, thank you for my one shot. And I apologize for my audio a little bit today. We're going to have it all fixed. Just sometimes tech is tech. If you saw this office, you would understand. So with all that being said, what a really good show today. A fun show today. It's time for you to go out into the world. Pay it forward. Be kind to one another. And understand that if you turn on these notifications, you won't miss one single second of our incredible company. So with all that being said, there's only one thing left to do. And I believe you all know what that is. You've got your marching orders. Let's take all of these tickets straight to the pay window. My target, Blue Ball, my man A.B., Raphael, the man from the Dirty Dirt Charts, and, of course, the legend, Howie Quab. This is his time. I'm simply the coach trying to keep this train on said track. We grind for you so we can win with you. It's truly what we're all about right here. Have a great day from driving the line.